Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a talk on uh, the vesicular and blistering diseases, you know, as part of the differential diagnosis in dermatology. Now with uh, vesicles and blisters, we've said that the mnemonic is ICI. Imperial Chemical Industries were a big company in Scotland uh, when I was a boy, I don't know if they even still exist, but ICI always uh, uh, remains in my mind. Uh, that particular designation. So what does the ICI stand for? The two eyes are uh, very similar to pustular diseases, you know, where in pustular diseases it was infective or uh, inflammatory. Well here the first eye is infective again, so you've got blisters that can be due to viral infections, blisters that can be due to bacterial infections, and sometimes blisters that can even be due to fungal infections. The C is for uh, contact dermatitis, now, contact dermatitis uh, can give a variety of examiners pre um, presentations, but occasionally it'll give uh, a frank vesicular or blistering eruption. And the one that classically does the uh, blisters in contact is a plant contact dermatitis. We'll show some images of that in a minute. The second eye in ICI is inflammatory, but this time we also add in immunological because there are a lot of immunobullous diseases that uh, obviously present as blisters. And the classic ones being Willis pemphigoid and uh, probably uh, pemphigus, although pemphigus, the, blisters are, the, the, the wall of the blister is so thin that the blister bursts very easily and it just forms crusts. So ICI, infective, contact, inflammatory, again particularly drugs, but also things like insect bite reactions uh, and some metabolic diseases like porphyria, and immunological. So infective, contact, inflammatory, immunological. We've commented um, about bullous pemphigoid in the, early, uh, in the elderly being a, a common cause. We've con uh, talked a little bit about contact dermatitis there. It usually gives smaller vesicles rather than blisters, but sometimes they can join up to form blisters. I've said one of the common ones is hair dye allergies on the posterior neck and scalp and plant contact dermatitis if you get blisters, especially if they're in a linear, a linear streaky distribution, uh, distribution on an exposed surface, you know, where the patient's brushed up against an offending bush or tree. Um, the infective causes of blisters, usually a staph toxin, um, bullus impetigo in particular, or staph scalded skin syndrome. Although in the latter you often don't get frank blisters, you just get a red skin that peels very easily. In the, uh, the uh, bullus impetigo, by the way, that toxin acts very high up in the epidermis, just under the little stratum corneum, the top layer of the epidermis. So again, it's a very fragile blister. I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Uh, certain things can help you with uh, blisters. We've talked about this linear distribution being part, a linear streaky distribution being part of a contact dermatitis. But if you get blisters following the uh, peripheral nerves, you know, in a dermatomal distribution, and it's only on one side of the body, then the other thing to consider is herpes zoster, you know, shingles. A bullous insect bite reaction, um, that's part of uh, inflammatory. That tends to occur in the lower legs, and they're quite tense. Uh, we see them here on the Gold Coast uh, in Queensland, you know, with sand fly bites, where uh, people who don't have any immunity go walking along the beach, get bitten by the sand flies around the ankles and present with uh, quite intact blisters there. Often there's not a lot of surrounding inflammation in the blister as well. We've said that blistering drug eruptions um, are rare, but uh, if we're going to see them, it's often with the anti-epileptic drugs. And, you know, probably the worst blistering uh, drug reaction you can get is one called toxic epidermal necrolysis. I mean, you can obviously get the Stevens-Johnson, the erythema multiforme type as well. But the toxic epidermal necrolysis is where a patient comes in and the skin is uh, red and tender all over. And even when you just put your hand on the skin and, and, and put a little bit of pressure on it, the, the top layer of the skin, just the epidermis, just sloughs away. Uh, so uh, this is not a condition you want to see.
We talked of inflammatory things sometimes being metabolic disorders, and the one that will do that uh, is Porphyria cutanea tarda, PCT. This is where someone usually has some form of liver disease. Uh, they don't break down the hemoglobin molecule normally. It's broken down to substances called porphyrins that circulate in the blood. And these porphyrins react with uh, a wavelength of ultraviolet light, UVA, at about 400 nanometers. And what happens is enough light can penetrate through the skin to the very small blood vessels on the surface. And if you've got porphyrins in there, it will interact with them, causing damage. And you'll get these uh, very small blisters coming out, usually on the back of the hands, uh, on the feet, particularly in sun-exposed areas. There are a few other things that they get as well. These are firm blisters. They take time to burst as well. And again, there's usually not a lot of inflammation in the surrounding skin. Um, what I might do, let me show you some of the pictures of some of these conditions. I'll switch into this one here. And we'll look at some of these. Now here you're saying, well, where's the blister? Well, the blister has been here. Um, but this has been a very superficial blister, and it's burst in the surfaces, sloughed away, and has left these crusts around the outside. And this is bullus and patigo. This is a staphylococcal blistering disorder. But it's so high up that it just cause, uh, calls, uh, causes crusts to form. And you may only see the blister over a very short period of time. These are grouped vesicles. Um, and whenever you see grouped vesicles, just like grouped pustules, your diagnosis is herpes simplex. So herpes will sometimes come like this. Several of them have joined up here. This is herpes zoster. Um, you can see that it's only coming to the midline here. It's in these dermatomes. Um, you can see some little vesicles uh, here. But again, uh, being a viral infection, often these will burst fairly quickly and you'll get crusts. But it's the distribution here, the localized area, na nature of the distribution. This will be painful, first of all, because the virus comes down the nerve, irritates the nerve. Um, and so for 12 hours before the rash comes up, there's often pain and irritation. So herpes zoster is a fairly easy blistering disease to diagnose based on the distribution. Look at that streaky blistering there on an exposed part of an arm um, with some crusting and the like on the surface. Remember we said the likeliest cause for this ICI, infective contact, uh, inflammatory or immunological. This is contact. This is a plant contact dermatitis uh, where it's coming just in that one area. So look, some of these little vesicles will join up to form blisters, uh, but you can see that linear streaky nature where the allergen uh, has been brushed against, usually a tree or a plant. Uh, it's deposited in the surface of the skin, and then it reacts, causing this. We mentioned these metabolic uh, causes of blistering as part of the inflammatory cause, and this is Porphyria cutanea tarda. These have been blisters that have ruptured and formed crusts, and you can see the blister is occurring on non-inflamed skin. And it's a deep-seated blister because all the damage is taking place just at the dermal, dermal junction or just below that. So porphyria cutanea tarda. Some drugs will cause blisters as well, particularly the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. And they can cause porphyria-like blisters. You can see this is a, a very intact blister without much in the way of surrounding inflammation at all. But again, um, whenever you see localized blistering like this, I mean, this could have been um, a bullous insect bite reaction occurring on the lower legs. Say, you remember we talked about sandfly bites. That could have done this as well. You just have to take a good history. Um, when you're investigating blistering diseases, if you're doing biopsies, by the way, you have to do one that includes a bit of normal surrounding skin. So you do a little ellipse across there that takes part of the blister and part of the surrounding skin. I'll show you why that's necessary in just a minute. Now, we were talking about um, blistering insect, uh, bullous insect bite reactions. This is what they look like. See how intact these blisters are? Um, not much in the way of inflammation around them at all. Someone might have been putting a bit of calamine there, just looking at the color around that. But uh, again, these come on suddenly. It's usually someone that's visiting an area for the first time, and they're getting exposed to uh, a biting insect, and they haven't got any effective uh, blocking immunity to it. 
Here's another series of intact blisters, but this time look at the red background here. Um, sure, some of them have burst here and you've got some little erosions, but uh, whenever you get intact fluid-filled blisters like this on a red background in an elderly person, especially in the groin, or under the breast or the like, then you've got to consider the immunobullous disease, bullous pemphigoid. So remember ICI, infective, contact, uh, or uh, inflammatory or immunological. Well, this is one of the immunological ones where antibodies, uh, autoantibodies the person's producing that attack the basement membrane and the whole of the epidermis is a blister. And so the wall's quite thick and so the blisters remain intact for some time. Occasionally you can get a little bit of bleeding into these as well. Patients who have this condition generally require oral steroids or some steroid uh, sparing agent to suppress the immune reaction that's occurring in their skin. Again, the biopsy here, you should take an intact blister out with some surrounding skin because they do special immune tests, uh, immunofluorescence, to show these antibodies that are deposited on the basement membrane causing the damage. Now you might look at this and say, okay, where are the blisters here? Well, you're not seeing many, are you? You're basically just seeing some crusts here on the elbow. But there were blisters here, and they're very itchy blisters. And in this particular patient, um, you get a history that the patient's with celiac disease. And the rash that they, you know, that's where you have a gluten, uh, wheat hypersensitivity. And the rash that they're showing there is dermatitis herpetiformis. Um, this classically occurs at the elbows, the knees, over the scapulae and sometimes over the buttock cheeks as well. But it's a very itchy uh, vesicular bullous rash, but it's scratched. And because it's scratched and traumatized, the blisters burst. And they, uh, you sometimes will see them just with the, the history of blisters, but with crusts there. But it's the distribution, elbows, knees, over the scapulae, over the buttocks, in the background of someone who has celiac disease. I mean, sometimes some people present with this rash and they don't know they've got celiac disease. But uh, it's the distribution that tells you rather than anything else. But again, it's an immunobullous disease. Um, uh, you take a whole lot of factors together when you're coming to a diagnosis in dermatology. Sure, if you knew there were blisters, you could say ICI. Okay, is this an infection, um, viral, bacterial, fungal? Is this uh, contact dermatitis? It would be unusual if it's very symmetrical like that. Um, is it an inflammatory drug disease? Again, unusual with that distribution. Is it an immunological disease? And that's when you might start thinking of uh, dermatitis herpetiformis. There are a variety of other immunological diseases, linear IgA disease, bullous uh, dermatosis of uh, childhood, um, uh, epidermolysis bullosa acquisita. But, you know, you, you can look those up after, and it's often when the diagnosis is made on the basis of the immunofluorescence. So these were the blistering ones. Let's go back to our, our uh, site here. Just remember, ICI, infective, contact, uh, immunological, and inflammatory. These were just some other pictures. This again was a plant contact with that linear blistering. There's another picture of zoster, just occurring in dermatomes coming up to the midline. This is a big overview of blisters, um, all the various potential causes of blisters. And there are some rare ones, you know, there are some rare fungal infections there that may blister. Um, there are some rare neoplastic conditions that may, may blister, parabneoplastic pemphigus, bullous mastocytosis. List of other drugs here. This is a, a list of all the other immunobullous diseases, but it's the biopsy that allows you to make the diagnosis. Some of the physical causes uh, there of blistering. But most of these, you'll get into the right ballpark if you use the mnemonic, because the mnemonic covers most of the common conditions that you're, um, you're going to see with the vesicular bullous uh, eruptions. Thank you very much.